Hello and welcome. Today the game is a bit different. This is a replay sent in by Tercept from Reddit. And this is a ranked battle in which he is sailing the tier 7 US cruiser. Light cruiser in fact. The Atlanta. It's a uh, 7 against 7. Carriers are independents. Col two Colorados on his team and the New Mexico. Enemy has a Colorado and, and the Nagato. And the Atlanta is pretty damn amazing. I did not actually expect this sh ship to be this amazing. This, this vessel, as I would call it, is made up of guns and nothing but guns. You see, the batteries have an insane rate of fire compared to the amount of them so this ship can put an enormous amount of shells into the air so anyways at first there's the obvious positioning battle that's going on and uh, which is the current situation is very good for the Atlanta because her one downside is the range and the shell trajectory but since all the enemies are coming close, the Atlanta is going to do quite a bit of work. Starting out with this Pepsi Cola, probably because it's one of the better targets at the moment. And just keep firing. The Atlanta is also good at anti-air because uh, all of the guns on it are dual purpose from what I understand. That is the main batteries. That means that they will also work as uh, anti-aircraft guns. The next target is the Nagato because the Pepsi is behind the island and the uh, fire started which is really good. Right now he's playing really well in the sense that uh, he is... Um, Keeping a small area shown to the enemies, he isn't showing his broadside, otherwise he would probably get killed. But since the Atlanta's guns turn really quickly, it's not that problematic to uh, keep running and uh, turning. She is a lot like the other light cruisers, which is probably something that I would actually enjoy playing. Although, I guess, not having long range would be a huge downside for me. I mean, look at how quickly this Nagata is falling. Yes, the volleys aren't doing that much damage, but they are causing lots of fire. And uh, if you're on the receiving end of this thing, then the, then the simple act of being hit by so many shells at once gets incredibly annoying. Cleveland is the next target apparently, probably because the Cleveland is actually a rather dangerous opponent for an Atlanta, as the Cleveland can kinda match the Atlanta's firepower. Well, okay, maybe not quite match, but she is a lot tankier, while still having a lot of damage output. The good thing for um, Tercep's team at this point is that they are all together, and uh, except the Atlanta and the Carrier, and they and they know where the enemies are, so they can pick them apart. They can take one target at a time. For example, that Colorado. Uh, they have two ships that can fire at the Colorado right away, and they could they're gonna get the third one on target too. And the Colorado is making a huge mistake by not focusing the Atlanta and focusing on other targets. But since there's a Mutsuki around, it's a destroyer and the Atlanta excels in killing destroyers because she is a light cruiser and that's what light cruisers are incredibly good at. The Mutsuki dropped torpedoes into the water as you could see. 
she already died. So many shells. Look at it. It's been less than seven minutes and 160 hits. It, it's still been less than seven minutes, by the way. And we're looking at 200 hits. In a ranked battle, no less. Oh yeah, by the way, the Atlanta also has torpedoes, but they are rather short range. So they aren't usually as uh, important. In terms of... Uh, oh yeah, the one thing that makes uh, the ships like the Atlanta and the Cleveland really powerful, and the Mogami, is the fact that their guns are less than 155 millimeters, which means that the tier 4 captain skill gives them 20% range, the tier 1 captain skill gives them 10% faster reload, and the tier 2 captain skill gives them a ton more uh, turret rotation speed. Now the Oba is gonna burn down. Actually his team is... Uh, it surprised me. His team lost really hard to the cruisers. I mean, look at it. It's just the carrier and the Atlanta left. But the Atlanta is dismantling all the enemies single-handedly in this match. I mean, look at how this Pepsi is dying. Goodbye, Pepsi. And it's not like the carrier is gonna do much about this because... The Atlanta is amazing against air. Especially air that is a tier lower. He, she is a cruiser. Look look at it. Look at how fast those torpedo bombers are dying. And now there's a Cleveland. But Cleveland is firing HE. Wait, no, is he? Can you permanently break turrets with HE? Well, at this point it doesn't matter because the Atlanta is showing her only the front. Gun crews are on normal alert. Fire torpedoes of course, so the Cleveland gets finished off even if the Atlanta suddenly dies. And then the, it would be a fight between two independences and because uh, they have the cap point, it's likely that they would have won, even if uh, this Cleveland had won this gun duel. But she didn't, she still lost. Look at it, 362 hits, it hasn't even been 10 minutes in a 7 against 7. This is amazing. Like, the way he's playing this ship is insane in this match. Yes, he is having quite a bit of luck in the sense that the enemies aren't targeting them as much, etc. But still, what he's pulling off, the amount of hits he's getting is ridiculous. I, I really wish I could do something like he's doing here. That, that would just be feel awesome. And now it's just the independence. You can't do anything here anymore, sorry. But this 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 kind of an enemy might be your worst nightmare. I I really can't think of much that a carrier dislikes more than fighting an Atlanta. Maybe a Des Moines. So yeah, he pretty much carried this game super hard. Yes, his team did their job in pulling damage and uh, focus fire and all that, but still... Tercep with his Atlanta definitely pulled his weight and... Clutched victory for his team. Because this is a replay, of course, we have to look at pictures of the end results. Anyways, uh, look at this. 627k in a 7 against 7.
4,500 experience, okay, almost 4,600, 440 hits on target in a 10-minute game. That's, that's mind-blowing. And look at this, 3,000 base experience. This is, this is simply ridiculous. Like, absolutely ridiculous. I, I, I sure hope uh, that his team bought him like a pizza or something. Like, this is, this is some ridiculous carrying. And if you look at this, damage actually isn't that super high. It's only like uh, 140k, a little less maybe. Um, but 440 hits on target out of 788. That that's that's a ridiculous accuracy. I mean, that's 55.8% of the shells fired hit their target. The amount of shells fired is already high, but the amount that also connected is this this is something I really wish I could do myself. Like I am absolutely in awe by this match. And so thanks Tercept for showing me this. Th this was simply amazing. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, then please subscribe and thanks for watching.